Alright, so this week I really don't have a lot going on. I'm either waiting for stuff to come back from getting coated, or I'm waiting for stuff to come back from a machine shop. On top of all that, it's raining out today. Trying to do a video once a week. Sometimes I can't do it, but I, that's what I try to do is once a week. And I try to put them out on Thursdays. And sometimes that gets a little bit mixed up, but that's what I try to do is a, one, a video once a week and on Thursdays. So like I said, this week I don't have a lot to work on out here, but what I thought I could do is talk about what seems to be a, a fairly popular subject out there. And what it is, is whether you want to run manifold vacuum to your vacuum advance, or whether you wanted to run ported vacuum to your vacuum advance. I have my opinions about this, and basically, let me talk a little bit about it, and about what each one would do. So the idea of this here is that if you apply a vacuum to this it will it will advance your ignition timing. So the difference between running this to a manifold vacuum or running this to a ported vacuum source is that when it would do it. So basically if you hook this up to manifold vacuum then you'll have high vacuum or higher vacuum when the engines at idle or low loads. Uh, I'm going to say mostly at idle though. Whereas on the other hand, if you hook it up to a ported vacuum source, then the vacuum actually shows up as the as the throttle opens. So you'll have vacuum here, more vacuum here at when the engine's at a heavier load. So I'll tell you my opinion about it and where I got my opinion from. So what I base my opinion on is a kit that I bought oh, several years ago for a car that I have with a with an HEI distributor just like this one and uh, I wanted to have a an adjustable vacuum advance and this one here that's on this one is probably adjustable and I usually can kind of tell which ones are adjustable and which ones aren't is if they've got this hexagon shaped uh, part here, usually if they're just round or kind of fl whatever, that would probably indicate to me that it's probably not adjustable, but if it looks like this hexagon shape here, then it's probably adjustable, and what you do is you put an Allen key down through here, and there's a there's a, a screw in there that you can turn in and out, and what that does is it changes the preload on the spring that's in here. So the idea being that um, at a given vacuum, intake manifold vacuum, you could increase or decrease the amount of vacuum advance that you get based on the tension in that spring. So this one here is probably uh, adjustable. But what I, but the one I had did not have an adjustable one, and I wanted an adjustable one, so I bought this kit here. And I don't know if Crane is still making anything anymore. Kind of, kind of doesn't seem like it, but I, I don't know that for sure. Crane might still be out there. I don't know. Any, at any rate, I don't know if you can get this kit anymore, but. If you're interested, that's the kit that I got from it. And I base my opinion about whether to use ported vacuum advance or manifold vacuum advance based on the instructions that are in that kit. And basically what they say is that this is supposed to go to a, a manifold vacuum source, not a ported vacuum source. And I'd show you the instructions, but I'm wagering that there's some sort of copyright on them and I'll get some sort of strike and I don't feel like messing with that. So I'm just going to tell you, I think it's okay to say that they say connect this to a manifold vacuum source. So that's basically where I base my opinion. But I'll back that up a little bit and tell you why I think that's probably right. And the reason I think that's right is well to think about it in another way is what's what's the purpose of the vacuum advance in my opinion well to my in my opinion the purpose of the vacuum advance is to get better fuel economy so let me say you why i think running the vacuum advance gives you better fuel economy and why you can run more vacuum advance when the engine's at either idle or at low loads and so basically when you're at low loads your throttles you know pretty much close to shut and you've got low pressure in your intake manifold 
Well, all that low pressure in the intake manifold is going to correspond to lower pressures in your combustion chamber. And if your combustion chamber pressures are lower near when the uh, spark is going to occur, then that reduces your likelihood of spark knock or pre-ignition, however you want to put it. But it reduces the risk of that spark knock happening. And that means that if you got less risk of spark knock, that means you could advance your timing a little bit more. And since you can do that, the idea is that that added advance at low loads can improve your efficiency a little bit. I think that would be a pretty complicated concept to really talk about properly, but uh, that's the idea. The idea to me is that you hook this up to a manifold vacuum and then you have more advance at low loads that gives you more efficiency. That's the idea. And you can kind of tell that there's something kind of to that when you have your engine at idle and you just change your ignition timing if you advance it from say 30 degrees to 40 degrees you're more than likely going to hear the the engine speed increase even though you didn't give it more air or fuel and so in my opinion that's where this this needs to go is to the the manifold vacuum now I've, I've seen it over the years some people do like to run this to a ported vacuum source and I'm not really sure why they do that. Um, the only thing I can say is that I used to do that back years and years ago. And the thing that it would do when you ran this to a ported vacuum, it, would, it, it seems like at low loads with this connected to ported vacuum, it would make the engine more kind of snappy and more responsive. And that might lead you to think that uh, maybe you were getting more power out of the engine. But personally, I don't think that's the right thing to do. But my opinion, I would never use this connected to a ported vacuum, at least not on an engine like this. I'd hook it up to a manifold vacuum. Now, on the other hand, so let's talk about the way I do it. So I've got a car with duration in the 230s at 50, and I've got a car with duration in the 240s at 50. And on neither one of those cars do I run, I, ha I don't have this hooked up to anything. And I'll tell you why I don't have this hooked up to anything on either one of those cars. Even after the engine was warmed up, I'd pull up to a stop sign and the engine would basically stall or attempt to stall. So I'd have to put my foot on the gas pedal a little bit to keep the engine RPMs up so the engine wouldn't die. And what was happening was during driving down the road everything was fine. It was working like it was supposed to. But you get to a stop sign and what happens is the, you know, your engine RPMs drop down. And what happens when on a car like that, when, when the engine RPMs drop down, well, so does the, um, the manifold vacuum. That also drops down. And then what does that make happen? Well, you got less vacuum here. That makes you have less timing, which makes your RPMs drop down even further, which makes you have even less intake manifold vacuum, which gives you less ignition timing again. And then the engine just slows down and wants to stall. And then you have to keep your foot on the pedal just to keep the engine running. So it's kind of like this cycle of events that just keeps the, uh, when, it's, when you're going down the road, everything's fine. But when you pull up to a stop sign, you got to keep the engine running with your, with the gas pedal. And that kind of, you know, that was okay for a while, but I got tired of it. And I didn't like that, so I got rid of it. I got rid of this and just turned up the, uh, the idle speed with the screw. And that got rid of that problem on both of them. So it makes the car a little bit more pleasant to drive. So I don't want to talk a lot about my strategies with ignition timing curves. And that's a whole other thing, really, to me. But all I wanted to talk about this week was, you know, there's basically three ways you can handle this. You could hook it up to a manifold vacuum or ported vacuum, or you could not hook it up to anything. And the third option is the one that I choose pretty much every time. The only time I would hook this up to, hook this up at all, and I would only hook it up to a manifold vacuum, is if I had a pretty stock engine with a pretty stock cam with pretty good intake manifold vacuum. But when, once you go to a hot camshaft, this thing gets a little bit troublesome. And that's why they make some of these with the adjustable, the adjustable advance part in there, so that you can adjust around that. But once you get up to a certain amount of duration on your camshaft, this thing really gets kind of troublesome and 
more trouble than it's worth in my opinion. And the instructions for that kit right there, there's actually a tuning procedure for this. And there's a whole then they tell you how to hook it up and they don't tell you to hook it up to ported vacuum, so I don't I wouldn't do that. That's just me though. Anyway, to wrap it up, I generally don't use this at all, but if I was going to use it, I'd hook it up to manifold vacuum. And pretty much I can't ever think of a reason why I would connect it to ported vacuum. Anyway, that's about all I got for this week, and I'll see you next time.